It's a greenhouse group trifecta this week on FAQs. All three in-house questions. We're talking home inspection. Exactly what it is I gotta be aware of for mine. Closing costs, what are all those line items mean to me? And then Fed rates. Does that necessarily have a direct impact on my mortgage rate? Check it out. What up, gang? This is our opportunity to do hot seat, frequently asked questions. Jesse Abanez, co-founder of the Greenhouse Group Real Estate Consultant, uh, flanked by my man Greg Kuchan, Real Estate Consultant Greenhouse Group as well. Um, so let's get right into this. Oh, should I set it up a little bit better than that? By the way, we're in a little makeshift spot. We got kicked out of our normal studio in there. They're actually doing real estate yeah. stuff, like real things. Business. So our little our little uh, escapades got thrown into the uh, the bullpen. But uh, here's a show where where um, home buyers and home sellers get to ask questions. I don't know what those questions are. Um, I like it that way because then it comes more, it's like non-scripted, none of that crap, comes right off the hook. And, um, and uh, you get a chance to get some, uh, some frequently asked questions uh, answered. So let's do this. All right. First question, uh, it's actually going to be both from the same people. It's going to be from Alexis and David Soper. Good job on getting into a contract oh, this week. Oh, you're going, you're going gorilla with some oh, in-house yeah. folks. In-house All right. Stuff. I see how yeah. this is. Uh, Alex and David really want to know um, what is specifically covered and looked at during a home inspection. Oh God, now I'm really on the spot. I'm gonna have to answer to these two guys. Um, so here's the deal, home inspection, right? Uh, a little bit different if it's a detached home versus an attached home, of course, but the basic gist is that in the home inspection, you're gonna cover the big five, right? So you've got foundation, you got roof, you got plumbing, you got electrical, and then last one's general overall functioning systems like appliances and finishes and, and whatnot. Basic rule is, if you fail any of those big five, you get the heck out of that property before you waste any more money, right? Recoup your earnest money deposit, bounce to the next property. Chances are though, right, God willing, that you're not gonna find anything big, hairy, and audacious that's gonna want, make you wanna punt on the whole thing entirely, but you're probably gonna uh, find a whole litany of things that are wrong with it. So that's where you go back, sit down with your real estate consultant, and, uh, and, and draft out a strategy, and I say that word specifically, uh, of a repair request. And the reason why that's so critical for like first time buyers and stuff, which I know is more of the VAT who's gonna tune into this, is that you get often told that this is an opportunity to renegotiate the contract with the seller. And to some extent, functionally, that's not untrue. But you gotta be careful though, because the seller doesn't even have to respond to your request if it's not even written intelligently, right? If it's not written intelligently, meaning it's founded on the basis of like, things that are health and safety concerns, right? The, the opportunity that's somehow um, taken and afforded to uh, buyers in the situation is that they'll take advantage of the situation, try to go back and ask for like maintenance items and things uh, to be fixed. And the truth is they can do whatever the heck they want. As a buyer, you can ask for a pink elephant to be installed in the front yard if you want, right? Doesn't mean the uh, seller's gonna necessarily do it, of course, but the, the, uh, the more unintended consequence is that if you go pink elephant next to some actual legitimate requests, I've actually sat in on meetings with sellers. Well, they'll throw the baby out with the whole bathwater and then you get none of it done. And so you got to be very careful about uh, what you ask for in the repair request. But what's covered is basically everything under the sun, right? You can't look through walls, even though we got the FLIR cameras, mm -hmm. which do a pretty good job getting close to that. But uh, all of the lowest hanging fruit to make sure you're not buying a lemon, that's what gets afforded to you with the four or $450 home inspection that you, afford, that you pay for. All right, next question is also coming from Alexis and David. Oh, come on, now you're stacking the deck? Oh, stacking the deck hard, all right. All right, let's do this. Pocket list things all right over here. Um, so they want to know what are the closing costs, what are they used for, and how is that amount calculated? What are the closing costs of a typical purchase transaction? Yeah. What are they used for? And how is that amount calculated? Okay. Yeah. So this is actually something where in large effect, you're going to get answered from your mortgage broker, right? Okay. So when you sit down and come up with a mortgage plan and you guys start figuring out like things like purchase power and down payment and all these things, you also need to get that little litany, that little laundry list of what your expected closing costs are going to be cooked in relative to an estimated purchase price. A lot of things are dynamic with the purchase price, like prepaid interest, um, escrow charges are a lot, a lot of times, you know, based off of the uh, title insurance as well, or based off of the actual purchase price. 
and they're kind of chunked down into ranges. Some of the things are more uh, cooked in, are going to be standard every time. Um, but the basic gist is that uh, that is part of your estimated net closing uh, statement that you get with your mortgage broker when you get pre-approved. That's what, let's just say, 95% of the numbers, right? The only things that are going to be uh, outstanding from that that your mortgage broker can account for are going to be things that are dynamic with the process, like the home inspection, like we just talked about, right? For 450 bucks, sometimes down to 300, depending if it's a little condo. You got the appraisal, which they actually do account for inside that um, uh, that loan uh, settlement statement. Um, that's going to be in there for 450 bucks, sometimes a little higher, depending on what type of finance you're going to get. And then anything dynamic that might come up with ancillary home inspections, like you know, your home inspector is like a general practitioner and he might actually suggest specialists like, oh, you need a roofing guy to come out and check out that roof. That thing's jacked up. Or there's a foundation expert needs to go look at that crack right down there, make sure it's not communicating itself into the slab. Those are the things that are more dynamic, kind of more gray area stuff. Um, but that's what the gamut of most of the closing costs are going to be. And they'll be spelled out specifically what they're going to be used for in a delineation of a line item breakdown. Was there a third part to that? No, what was the third part to that? Uh, what are the closing costs? Yep. Um, what are they used for? And typically about a percent or two is kind of what you guesstimate on of the purchase price. So closing costs used for and how they're calculated. Yeah, fair enough. So any questions about that? Those are um, uh, broken down in more specificity with your loan guy or gal. Cool. What's next? Last question comes from Inga Ferber. We're going to keep it all in-house today. That's good. Greenhouse uh, Triumph. Uh, Trifecta. There you go. All right, she uh, she's going to go a little bit deeper on this one. What is the likelihood of the Fed increasing the rates mm. affecting mortgages and the real estate market overall in San Diego this yeah. year? Well, there's no question that what's driving the market right now, either in full in total or at least in a large degree, are the rates. Now, one of the misnomers, though, that people um, I'd say almost everybody does, unless you're like literally in the business or you're inside this conversation. They think that the, all the chatter about the overnight Fed funds rate that you hear talked about with the uh, Fed chairman uh, every time they meet is directly proportional to the mortgage rates. The mortgage-backed security market, more specifically, that's traded over there with the Wall Street guys that actually um, uh, establishes what the 30-year fixed rate and all the other ones are going to be. The reality is that they're not the same, okay? Um, a lot of times, historically, when you're in a healthy market, in a healthy environment, they actually operate inversely proportional to one another. So the amount that banks are lending money at of the overnight Fed funds rate is, is, uh, is not the same as what you're going to be borrowing on a 30-year fix for your mortgage. Now, things have been so jammed up lately with the whole bailout and all that stuff going down that I don't think anybody can literally point a finger uh, with any amount of assurity and say what's going to happen when they do start, because they already did, they did it once already yeah. for the first time in 10 years, uh, a couple months back, and some of the pundits in the room seem to think they're gonna uh, touch that thing maybe two or three more times between now and the end of the year, and then all bets are off once the election happens. Um, so it'll be interesting, and I think that even the people smart enough to raise their hand and think they know what's gonna happen are literally gonna be watching with just as much curiosity as the rest of us. Luckily for us, when they raised them earlier, it actually had a what effect to the rates? Negative. Exactly. Well, positive. Yeah. If you want positive to look at it, yeah. Us, negative so they actually negative. went down a little bit, and that was a confluence of a certain of a couple other circumstances as well, which were favorable. But so I would say, stay tuned. But as a large, you know, as an overarching answer to that, don't make the mistake like most people make of thinking the two things are one and the same because they're not. Thank you, Inga. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you, David and Alexis. Yep. A full in-house uh, in greenhouse week this week for FAQs. Uh, but I don't want you to be left out of the conversation either. So uh, use our hashtags. If you have any question you want to throw me in the hot seat on, um, we're using hashtag uh, home buyers FAQs, hashtag home sellers FAQs. And then you can also just use hashtag ask Jesse how uh, for next week. And we'll go ahead and scour the internets to see who used the hashtag before next week. So thanks for hanging out.